Welcome to the second lesson of the lecture course, How to Draw a Cup of Tea. In this course you will learn how to draw the basics of perspective for designers and architects. The second lesson is about drawing a cube by imagination or from memory. As a designer or architect, when you have mastered the skill of drawing correct cubes, as explained in the first web lecture, you also are able to sketch your design into its correct looking proportions. And not visualized in extreme and impossible perspectives as shown here. In the first lecture we started drawing a cube by observation. This gave, gave information about what happens with the angles and dimensions of a cube in perspective. As observation was the starting point of perspective, we should go back to that idea. One important but very often forgotten rule in perspective is that you observe with only one opened and fixed eye, looking straight forward at the object. So there is only a small field in front of your eyes which can be seen sharp and without distortion. The rest becomes blurred. This is your cone of vision. And this is actually a quite small one. A circle or angle between 22 degrees and 30 degrees wide. The observer in the picture of Dürer never could have had a cone of vision between 22 or 30 degrees. This must be far bigger because the person is situated too close to the object. Analyzing the cube, which was drawn by observation, you can see that the vanishing points are laying quite far away when I extend the lines, especially at the lateral shortened side. At the other side, the vanishing point is closer. Looking at the drawing with closer vanishing points, you see something strange. The angle on the floor becomes even smaller than 90 degrees. This never can be observed in reality. The same problem can be detected at the drawing made on the secondary school. An exaggerated, unimaginative perspective. Here perspective becomes a trick, without taking into account that it had to do something with observation. There is a rule. If you want to draw a correct perspective, this is a perspective with no distortion. The drawing itself needs to fit at least five or six times between the two vanishing points. Looking at the drawing from the Dutch 16th century artist Fredeman de Vries shows you a nice three-dimensional situation constructed in a one-point perspective. But more precise observation leads to the conclusion that this is an example of distorted perspective. The lines on the floor would suggest squares. Putting cubes on the diagonals makes the distortion visible. Close to the horizon the cubes look quite okay, but the further the distance towards the horizon becomes, the stranger the cubes get. The cube on the right side of the bottom line of the drawing has an angle on foreground of 90 degrees. This would suggest that the observer is hanging straight on top of the cube, from where you wouldn't be able to see the vertical ribs of the cube. The two cubes on the left of the image are unimaginative. Their angles become even smaller than 90 degrees, which never could be seen or possible in reality. This drawing shows the situation in a correct, non-distorted perspective. The vanishing points are much further away. So we know now that a drawing a cube with vanishing points on the paper nothing has to do with how a real cube looks like. But then what? Going further with analysis of the cube drawn by observation. We want to position with one side more and the other side less foreshortened. A difference which is clear and gives a good distinction between both sides. The less foreshortened side can be used later on for drawing the most informative side of the object. You can start drawing the first vertical rib as being the largest rib of the whole cube. This rib is the closest to you and all other ribs are shorter because of the perspective. The further away the smaller it gets. 
also draw a horizontal line in front of the first rib, the place where the nearest point on the ground is. This is a dummy line, which shows more clear the angles you want to make. Make long crossing lines that gives your drawing a certain tightness. Then make the angles on the floor. The less foreshortened side needs a smaller angle. The most foreshortened side of the cube needs a bigger angle. Analysis of the drawing made by observation shows that the square at the less foreshortened side, where the angle is the smallest, almost looks like a square. This is always the easiest side to draw, so let's try. But therefore we need to draw also a horizontal helpline on top of the first rib. Now we make at the less foreshortened side the angle on top of the cube, giving the two horizontal lines a little convergence. The vanishing point is far away, outside the paper. Make long lines so you are able to see the convergence. Where is now the end of the cube? At the less foreshortened side it's now easy to guess where the vertical needs to be. Try it and judge whether it looks ok. Most difficult to imagine is the most foreshortened side because there is not much resemblance with the square. In this quite strange trapezoid form we can't recognize a square anymore. Where the vertical end and the cube will come is just tricky. The best is to draw it and keeping in mind that the plane needs to be far shorter than you could think. So make a guess, for instance half the size of the first vertical rib. Draw it and focus for your judgement on the floor of the cube, which can be seen inside. Now the horizontal line on top needs to be drawn. At this more foreshortened side the convergence is stronger than at the other side. The horizontal line meet each other faster on the vanishing point. For having more control how this line needs to converge, we use a trick. First make the horizontal line in the back and on the ground of the cube. This line is easy to draw in between the two perspective lines which are already there. And especially when you make a long line, you are able to give it the right direction. In this drawing is shown that the most foreshortened planes change size horizontally measured because the planes turn more towards you and thus show larger. Then measure horizontally the most foreshortened side of the cube. Put that size at the inside of the cube and enlarge this a bit because the plane on the inside turns more towards the observer and thus becomes larger on the inside. Now you can draw the back rib. When you have the rib at the back of the cube, you can draw the horizontal line on top of the cube at the most foreshortened side. Then it's easy to finish with first drawing the horizontal line at the back of the cube, then the last horizontal at the less foreshortened side. Your cube is ready now. Post the question if the cube looks correct. Do all the lines at the left direction run to one vanishing point? And at the other side, do they run somewhere to another point? Do the planes look like squares, also the one at the bottom? A short analysis of often made mistakes. The first one, the most foreshortened side is chosen too deep. There won't fit an ellipse on the floor with a horizontal long axis. Number two, there is too much convergence on both sides. Vanishing points are too close together. Number three, when the vanishing points are not laying on the same horizon or the horizon is oblique. A fourth example is there is hardly no convergence visible. This looks more like a parallel projection instead of a perspective. Restore the cube if you see it's not correct. When finally your cube is correct, the last step is toning. Which surface is the shadow side and becomes thus the darkest? In this case, I should take the less foreshortened side because then you put a layer of toner on the lines in the back, which then disappear. How to do this with marker? Put the point of the marker into the direction of the horizontal top rib and go vertically downwards. Just toning one side is enough. This is shown in the first lesson. 
if you have a broader collection of markers, you could make a light tone on the other side, but make enough contrast. Here the marker tone is made by layering, starting in the corner of the plane, making overlapping layers and blend towards the other corner. Never go back. How to tone with black lead? You usually do this when your cube is drawn also in the same material. You can start with the hatching into a sort direction which crosses the whole surface at once. Then a second layer into a slightly different direction and then a third one. This could be a basic tone which hardly shows any more direction. And for making a nicer tone you have to persist and make many many layers. The other side could then be made in a far lighter tone. Important is that there is enough contrast between both sides because of the spatial effect. There will also be gradients visible when you show, should observe straight surfaces. You can differ, but usually you see the biggest contrast where the two vertical surfaces meet each other. Unless you choose the light as coming from the back. Thank you for attending this lesson about drawing the basics in perspective for designers and architects. There is a next step. How to draw a cube by using a projection drawing system.